All right, guys, uh, happy Friday. I'm going to be heading out here shortly to go do some work, but you're in my kitchen with me right now because of the lighting. It's a really cloudy day, and we got to talk about something really, really, really important. So I want to take you from the beginning of uh, some correspondence I had with, is that the right word? Correspondence I had? Some writings I had? The interaction I had with a customer. Um, so we're going to start with the very beginning, okay? This is the invoice for one of my customers in Pooler, and the date of this invoice, the service was done on the 26th. I don't have my glasses on, so it's a little bit hard for me to read, uh, and my eyes still a little bit blurry. Um, on the 26th, I serviced this customer's yard, all right, up in Pooler. I did it alone, I was by myself. So the next thing that I get, I get an email September 3rd from my customer. The title of the email, the subject line is damage to my outside AC condenser unit. So that's the first thing that I see and I'm like, oh crap, what happened? You know, what did I do? Um, what's he talking about? So I'm going to read this to you because this is a very real life thing and you might want to close out right now, but look, this is going to happen to you in your career. This is going to happen to you more than one time in your career. This is what you can expect. So let me be the first, hopefully, to say this to you. Dan, I am writing you in regard... Wait, I gotta get my glasses. Ugh, that is so much better. Okay, Dan, I am writing you in regards to damage that was done to one of my outside AC units. He's got a two-story house, and they have two separate units. Um, the AC went down on Friday, August 26th. Remember, I showed you this invoice, 26th. I was there. And the AC tech noticed the damage when he was able to come out on the following Tuesday. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, they did not have air conditioning at one part of their house. Either they're upstairs or they're downstairs. The damage done caused a leak in the coil part of the outside condenser and the AC would no longer cool. That is true. That's what would happen. As a result of this damage, we have had to replace the whole outside unit at a cost of $3,780. That is also true. I worked in the AC industry a very, very, very long time ago with a girlfriend's parent who owned the business. And sometimes damage, it's cheaper to replace the whole unit than it is to try to order, wait for, and replace just a coil. Um, the company that replaced the unit explained that the damage could only have been done by riding lawnmower. I do have one of those. I have attached photos of the damage and can forward you a copy of the receipt once it is received. I am hoping, this is, this is, this is key right here guys, I am hoping as a reputable business owner, this is his words, you would file a claim with your insurance company to reimburse us for the full amount we paid for the replacement of the outside AC unit. Okay, it says that right there. Okay. This guy's not playing games. He doesn't want me to split it with him. He doesn't say, hey, you know, I think, you know, it could have been done by you. You know, can we discuss this? Can no, no, no. This guy wants $3,780 pronto. And you know what? So would I. Uh, don't blame him at all. And he attached pictures. So let me go ahead and put the pictures up. So uh, the first one that we're looking at is a corner. Um, it's all done by the very corner of the AC units, and you could tell, we'll go through, here's the second picture, and then there's the third picture, and the fourth picture looks like the same. And we'll go back to the second picture, AC damage 2, and that looks like now I know I didn't hit it with my deck because my deck wouldn't clear that little slab even though that's just a plastic little uh, leveler slab. Um, it looks like perhaps my back wheel might, I might have cut in and then when I went to do like a kind of like a three point turn like I cut in close to it to reduce my weed eating and then uh, when I went to back up I might have backed up and backed into it a little bit and pinched it and pinched it enough to pull the coil wells apart um, very well could have happened the coils are right there at the end so okay so back to me all right um, so that's the damage 
uh, thank you, he signed it, thank you, and all his contact information. All right, so here we go, game on. So he asked me to submit the, the you know, the pictures uh, with my insurance company. So I know that my insurance company, just from common sense, I'm gonna need something more than just some pictures of damage. They're not just gonna send a check to me or whatever. So I respond back with, I have no problem with that, responding to his, you know, submit it for a claim. Sorry. I have no problem with that. I am the only one who rides the mower, so I am puzzled this happened, but I do have insurance for this very reason. Can you please send me the invoice? Okay, so I need the invoice. I, I got the pictures. Okay, I, I printed the pictures out, uh, or I saved the pictures, I mean, onto my hard drive. I need the invoice. So I got pictures of damage. I got a request from a customer. I got proof that I was there. He's got proof that I was there. Um, there's, I mean, it's not a lie. You know what I'm saying? The, the customer's not lying. Um, it happens. So, uh, so I requested the invoice. All right. So I then, on the 15th, it took him some time, but on the 15th, I got a scanned copy. Uh, here's the email I got from him, September 15th. Dan, I have attached a copy of the invoice and payment for the outside condenser. I thank you for your continued show of professionalism on this issue. And then there's the download that I had to download of the receipt. This is the receipt. $3,780 delivery date September 3rd. Says it. I mean, it's all right there. Um, there's no questioning this. I'm not questioning the company. I'm not questioning my customer. I mean, it happens. And believe me, a customer does not want to go through that crap. Uh, and it's a brand new house. I don't even think they've been in the house a year. Uh, so, you know, if there was something else wrong with the unit, it would have been fixed under the, the warranty anyways of the, the home, the sale of the home. Uh, but anyways, here it is, $3,780. So now, I responded back, got it? I will forward the pictures and the receipt to my insurance company. Um, by the way, I should be there tomorrow or Saturday to cut. <laughs> I mean business, I'm gonna do business, right? So okay, so I got pictures, I got the receipt. Now, what do I do? I contact my insurance company. Who is my insurance company? My insurance company is, let me see if there's a good, that's my insurance company, Hiscox, okay? And that's their email. Uh, their Twitter is at Hiscox underscore USA. Their web is www.hiscox.com. All right, their well, I think that's his local number. I don't know. Anyways, go to uh, www.hiscox.com, hiscox.com, okay? Or go through geico.com and ask for general liability insurance for your small business. That's what I have. Small business, general liability. That's what I got. Um, so I contacted, um, no, I took this out of the way, out of the, I contacted Hiscox and I said, hey, I got a problem. I need to make a claim. They said, okay, we'll have somebody contact you. So I get a phone call and I talk to a man named Matt. I tell him everything that happens. He says, okay, I'm going to email you. Okay. Hi, Daniel. Oh, I hate that name. September 20th, okay? So this is, I think, a Tuesday. I contacted them on Monday. He sent me the invoice and stuff like that Thursday night. I worked Friday, then Saturday, Sunday. So now here it is, the next week, Monday, first business day. So that's how I handled it because I know on the weekend nothing's going to happen. So Monday morning, I wake up. I call my insurance company, Hiscox. I say, hey, this is the deal, I got a problem. The very next day, I get an email, and it says, hi, Daniel. Thank you for speaking with me earlier. As discussed on September 2nd, 2016, you were mowing and accidentally hit your customer's air conditioning unit. That's a mistake, it was August 26th, 29th, whatever. Um, but, August, but September 2nd was when I got the email from him, the second or the third, notifying me of the damage. You were mowing and accidentally hit your customer's air conditioning unit, causing it to be damaged. 
Please allow this correspondence to confirm coverage for this matter under your commercial general liability policy. The policy's coverage, in all capital letters, a insuring agreement explains. We will pay those sums that the insured becomes legally obligated to pay as damages because of bodily injury or property damage. So basically he's saying, if you got property damage, if you got bodily injury, we will pay accordingly to your policy and the rules of your policy. So, you know, if I send him pictures of a tree limb through their roof, they're going to say, you oh, know, you're not covered for that. That's not what you do. Your general liability business, you're covered for minor things. Not, you shouldn't have been climbing a tree. That's a tree service policy. You shouldn't have been working with electrical and burn their house down. That's electrician. Um, so you got to make sure you're working within the realm of your coverage. So. It's a big word, realm. Don't ask me to spell it. Uh, so, uh, he goes on to ask, please send me the invoice photo in your customer's name, address, phone number, and email address, and I will follow up with them upon receipt. Best, in his name, Matt. Okay, Matt. So that was the 20th. So, at 2.02 p.m., at 2.08 p.m., I respond out with, back to Matt at his Cox, customer's name, address, phone number, and email. And then I attach the pictures and I attach the download of the invoice that he scanned and printed to me. Okay, that's the 20th, September 20th. Okay, so let's start, let's start back over real fast because this is really, really important. On September, Second, on the 26th of August, I mowed a customer's yard. On September 3rd, I get notification that the customer had to pay out $3,700. On the 19th, um, oh, on the 15th, the customer sent me the final documents that I knew I would need to file a claim. That was on the 15th. On the 19th, I contact my insurance company and say, I have a problem, I have all the documents, what do I got to do? On the 20th, my claims adjuster contacts me via email and says I need this stuff sent to me on the 20th I send that stuff to him on the 21st 21st Matt from his cox emails my customer directly CC's me you know car you know copies me so I get it as well hi customer's name we are the insurance company for Tremors Enterprises, LLC. That's my business. You all know that. Dan provided me your information and invoice for repair. Accordingly, we will be sending you a check for $3,780. You should receive in 7 to 10 days. Best in his name. And he signed it. Senior Claims Analyst, his Cox USA, with his phone numbers and everything. Now, I have not heard back from my customer yet, um, kind of surprisingly, but I would think that my customer would be like, dude, I really appreciate it, but they might be waiting for the actual check to come in. Um, my out-of-pocket, zero deductible for liability. I pay $122 every quarter. So every four months, three months, every three months, I pay $122. And it auto renews so hold on somebody's at my door okay sorry that that was my neighbor's dad who's out of town who's in town right now visiting and he needed some stuff to fix some stuff um, so I totally forget what we were even talking about where I even finished um, but yeah zero liability or zero um, out of pocket for this for me um, 122 a month every three months that includes auto renewal so I don't pay any larger fees and in fact in between this correspondence I got an email from his cock saying your policy is going to auto renew and here is your payment schedule for the next four the next four payment schedules for the next year's coverage so guys gals young guys old guys $122 every three months okay it might go up now because I have a claim I don't know $122 every three months $3,780 and this can happen again today tomorrow 
I could be getting an email from a customer in 10 minutes that says, do you know you shattered my $1,500 pane glass door? Um, do you know you dented my Mercedes with your edger blade? Remember that one? What old boy? Um, general liability insurance, guys, is no joke. You have to have it in this business. You absolutely must have it. Um, I get these horror messages from you guys about prices and all this stuff. I don't understand it. I called Geico and said, I need business insurance, and they connected me to Hiscox. And from there, we, I, you know, they were like, how much money do you make a year? I'm like, I don't know, under a hundred grand. Um, what are you looking for? I'm like, just general liability. What type of coverage? Million dollars, so that way I can do large shopping centers. And they're like, okay, you're gonna pay this amount of money. You can have two million dollar occurrences a year. They'll max out at a million dollars. So I could cause a million dollars worth of damage twice. But if it's one point two million dollars worth of damage, they're only gonna get one million dollars. The rest will have to come out of pocket. That can happen twice, two different claims. Um, so that's just that's so important, guys. You gotta have general liability insurance. I mean, it works out to what? What does it work out to? 122 bucks divided by three? What is that? Forty dollars a month? Forty-five dollars a month? For forty-five dollars a month? I've had this insurance now for two years. This will be the second time it's auto renewing. So one full year, two full years. So 122 bucks. So let's say. $600 and $1,200. I paid $1,200 over the course of two years. That's actually a high number. I paid $1,200 over the course of two years um, and they just threw four, almost $4,000 to a customer, no questions asked. No out of pocket any further for it. Amazing, guys. You gotta do it. You have to do it for the very thing that this customer relied on with me, okay? The most important thing that this customer said at the very beginning. I'm going to read this one more time. I am hoping as a reputable business owner. Guys, you're, you, can't, you can't go to a customer and say, Man, uh, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Your name is mud at that point. With the way social media is now, your name is mud. If you didn't do it, you better be able to prove that you didn't do it. You better get out there with a forensic team and show that the paint on that AC unit is green from a John Deere and your mower is red and that the neighbor, the neighbor's lawn service did it. You better have some way to prove that you didn't do it. And you also better be, you know, you better know, take a good look around and stuff and, and you know, um, you know, fight. If you didn't do it, you didn't do it. But come on, everything lines up. You know what I mean? There, you got to have this insurance. You have to have this insurance for just this reason. So this is no joke, guys. All right. And these glasses are making me dizzy and my eyes still really screwed up. So anyways, just a little real life lesson, man. And, and um, you know, it happens. I'm not. I mean, OK, I mean, I'm, I'm awesome. I get it. I know. I mean, and no, but seriously, this happens to everyone and anyone. And it's not a pride thing. So I'm here telling you. Okay, I'm being honest and open with you guys. This is real life crap that really does happen. Whether you're 13 years old, coming out of school and mowing grass, you know, after school and between homework assignments, or you're 73 years old and you're supplementing Social Security and Part B Medicare costs. I don't know. Um, it doesn't matter. Damage sees no age limit and a customer never cares how it was done. They just want their damn money back. Make sure you got liability insurance. All right, guys. I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much. Please hit that little subscribe button. I think it's down there. I think there's a little red button down there that says subscribe. It works on some mobile phones or not. Um, I will be giving you some more real-life crap. All right. Now, I got to get out there and go cut some grass. I'll see you.